Hey, welcome back. Uh, today, um, well, I'm looking to play a couple games of Relay Chess. Uh, also, I made a little minor code change uh, just to try to improve performance a bit. Uh, just based on some comments I saw that were in the Relay Chess code. Um, and I'm kind of curious whether or not I broke something. Also, I'm kind of curious just how slow is this page? Because people have been complaining about performance. People have been saying, and I verified yesterday that my server did not go down, so I don't know what you guys were talking about um, um, when you're saying that my server went down. It was up. I checked the application's logs as well. The application was up the entire time. Um, best I can figure, either some DNS records failed or... Um, just the internet connection between some external point and my home server um, was, I don't know, less than timely, we'll say. I don't know. But people being concerned about, oh, the server's slow, and oh, the server's unreliable, just makes me wonder what's really going on. Um, so I'm just taking a look seeing what goes on in the course of loading the page uh, and in the course of hopefully playing the game. Uh, unfortunately I do need an opponent to actually try to play against um, so we'll see if that manages to happen or not. In the meantime I'll see if I can somehow figure out I don't know what. I see that Chrome does have a tool for um, auditing something. I'm not entirely sure what. Um, yeah, okay, so it can run audits on, um, let's see, the current state of the page um, regarding network utilization. And regarding web page performance. Um, so I've seen it's making recommendations to improve network utilization such as combine the CSS files so that the server doesn't have to host up multiple CSS files. Um, combine JavaScript files such as server doesn't have to serve up as many JavaScript files and leverage browser caching. But you know, um, network utilization isn't a big concern as far as I see. Optimize the ordering of styles and scripts, but that only really applies for performance while loading the page. Um, yeah, so apparently this audit tool to figure out try to audit performance really is more concerned with initial page load than anything else. Oh, hang on. Okay, so I see some fonts, some things having to do with Cloudflare to serve up content. I wonder, uh, anyway, um, I'm trying to figure out yeah, I guess I should just record um, this JavaScript CPU profile. Well, that's not going to tell me everything I want. I want to know... Hmm. I mean, CPU profiling is probably... Well, okay, I could focus on one thing at a time. I was going to say, likely the thing that affects performance the most isn't the CPU usage. Uh, I'd be surprised if they had any effect, but it wouldn't hurt to actually audit that. Um, so if I like to seek a three minute game, obviously I'm not going to find an opponent in the next few instants here, but you know, eventually an opponent will arrive and that will gain my attention at some point. Um, Oh, I see. I'm not able to navigate over to other tabs of this of these developer tools while CPU profiles recording. All right, so I'll stop the recording. Take a look. Yep, most of the time um, this is idle. 
which makes sense because I'm not really doing especially much. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm focusing mostly on uh, the client side at the moment. Um, and yeah, I don't think that there's any problems with the client side code. Although you would think that this would be the point, this could be potentially the choke point to the application. Um, You never know. In fact, that's why you kind of have to do testing. Anyway, uh, I should see, I've got the link for this. I should probably provide it to you guys. Um, let's see, Relay Chess is located. Here we go. Right there. So, yep, just seeking a three minute game here. Surely CPU profiles not where things are suffering. Although I'm still curious, like during an actual game, how much CPU is utilized. Oh, actually, since, yeah, this does put this in terms of total time. That's kind of nice. Um, let's see. Capture a new timeline. Hit the record toolbar button or hit control E. To capture load load page performance, hit F5 to do the reload. Okay, so yeah, if I want to capture, um, just leave that open for a while and let that capture just how much network stuff is going on. I wonder if this is using a push or a pull. Um, model as in is it waiting and looking I'm sorry is there an open socket via which the server can notify the client that the uh, that there's new games out there or is this a model where the client continuously pulls uh, the server asking is there a new game I don't know I don't know how most of this works. I am very surprised to see just how much of the server code, um, well, in fact, all of it seems to be written in JavaScript. I didn't know you could do that much with JavaScript. Um, clearly, you'd have to be determined to make so much progress. It, it surprises me. Um, Hmm. So I'm trying to think of what to do. Let me just verify that my window... Yep, my window capture looks good. Okay, so if I leave this open... Well, let's see, I've captured 90 seconds of network traffic. And I can take a look and see... Um, just how much was done... What? Okay. See, so yeah, it spent 10 milliseconds uh, scripting uh, and just about as much time rendering. Uh, okay. But where do I see. Oh. Okay. Oh, I get it. Uh, so how do I view how much network traffic went on? Oh, here we go. Interactions. Input of no. Main. Okay, I've got so many things open. It's difficult for me to see. Um, what specifically was going on during that time? Up 
apparently there's like no network communication throughout that entire 90 seconds. That kind of surprises me. Although, why should it? Um, yeah, let's clear this timeline recording, go over to network recording. Um, Okie dokie. Uh, I guess, yeah, perform a request or hit F5 to record the reload. Okay, so I guess I performed a request. Okay, that didn't do it. Um, uh, okay. Interesting. Oh, okay, I see. You can also add throttling to your network logging. Uh, that's kind of fun. Um, <clears throat> let's see... Yeah. Oh, okay, record with Control e Recording network activity. So if I click this and I click that, that's got to be some network activity, right? Apparently it doesn't show up in the developer tools, though. That's kind of weird. Um, yeah, okay, so that doesn't actually tell me very much. Uh, so let's go... I suppose I have no way of knowing uh, at least client side, what's going on with regard to communicating with the server. Um, so let's just keep trying to profile the client instead. And so if I do find an opponent, or if I find a way to play against myself, and I think I might manage a way to do that, but I don't know. Uh, either way, this will give me some kind of basis as to uh, how to uh, test uh, performance of the client. Uh, I could show you guys the code change I ended up making the other day. That could be fun. Let's see if we can get that open. Okay, oh, there's my new window. Um, and we go over here. I think this is fine. I capture that. Let's add a window capture. Unless I already have one, in which I, case I could just reuse it. Uh, we're going to add a window capture for terminal. If I can spell terminal. There we go. There's the terminal. Um, so here's the change I made the other day. Uh, we're still not under revision control, and that does bother me. But uh, I could show you here. Uh, searched for to do inside the source code, and discovered this function here called in threefold repetition. Um, and so basically, what had happened? Oh, there's my alarm. Be right back. Basically, I was taking a look at the source code and seeing, is there anything that maybe I could help with or look at in the code to figure out if there's some even approach-wise thing that we just haven't done correctly. Um, and I found this to-do comment here saying that there's this huge performance penalty because we're not using Zoburst hashes and all that. And I know what that refers to. Um, but it occurred to me that the algorithm itself could use some improvement. Uh, and so I did make a change. So this used to, I mean, this function still does check for threefold repetition, but it only goes back um, 
as many moves as there are on the half move clock. And you might be asking, well, what's a half move clock? And it occurs to me now I have to show you. <laughs> so let's go to the Lee Chess editor. In fact, let's go to the Lee Chess analysis board. You see down below the board here, there's all these letters and numbers and more letters and then some more numbers at the end. Uh, this is Forsyth Edwards notation, commonly known as FEN. Uh, it's a simple way of representing a chess position in a real visual format. So what this says is that black has a rook and black has a knight, black has a bishop, black has a queen, etc. Black has a pawn, black has a pawn, and that's what all these letters here mean. So if you have a chessboard in front of you, and you're reading it top to bottom, left to right, you would read rook, knight, bishop, queen, king, bishop, knight, rook, pawn, 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 eight empty squares, eight empty squares, eight empty squares, eight empty squares, pawn, 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 pawn rook, knight, bishop, queen, king, bishop, knight, rook. And then the letters after this talk about whose turn it is, who's able to castle in which direction, is there an en passant square, um, the move number, and um, I'm sorry, the half move clock and the move number. And so this gets to the point of, well, what's a half move clock? Well, so here I made a pawn move, I made a pawn move, and we see that, okay, the last number is the move number here. The move, the number prior to that is the half move clock. So watch if I move a piece, that increments by one. If I move a piece, that increments by one. If I move a pawn, the half move clock goes back to zero. Why is the half move clock relevant? Well, it's relevant because of the FIDE laws of chess. Um, it's for competitions after July 20th, 24, or 1st July 2014, uh, 50 move rule. The game may be drawn if each player has made at least 50 moves without the movement of a pawn and without any capture. So that's what the half move clock sports to make sure that the chess game or the server or service uh, is able to correctly account for the fact that a player can claim a draw after uh, 50 ha uh, half moves by each player. So if white has made 50 moves, and black has made 50 moves. That's not exactly that, but you get the idea. If um, in the last 50 moves, neither player has moved a pawn and neither player has performed a capture, no progress has been made and therefore a draw can be claimed. So that's the 50 move rule. Um, what it means for threefold repetition, and what probably didn't occur to the developer, and this used to say while true, just go undo all the moves and then while true go iterate through all the moves and get all the fen strings etc etc and check if there's a match for this position well turns out if there's been a capture or if there's been a promotion which involves a pawn move or if there's been a pawn move at all um then uh then you know at the time of that capture or at the time of that pawn move there's no previous position that's exactly the same as that position it's not possible if the capture occurs there's no way pieces can just resurface onto the board and if a pawn moves forward all the previous positions had the pawns in a different formation um and it applies as well if, if a pawn does a capture so i was able to change this to say you know what when we're looking for repetitions of this position as we go backwards through the game from the current position backward, um, just stop searching when we hit the position where uh, the previous move was a pawn move or the previous move was a capture. Um, yeah. And so that way we can know if there is a threefold repetition. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm seeing kind of a defect here as well. I'm not sure if this matters, um, but this check this uh, goes through all the positions since that last pawn move and since that last capture, and um, 
returns true if any position has appeared three times. That's not the threefold rule, it's a slightly different rule. The threefold rule is if the current position, or the position you're about to achieve on the next half move, has already occurred twice and is now occurring a third time, um, a player may claim a draw. So, um, hmm, okay. I guess I can't show that yet. Um, I guess I could go back to Lee Chess to demonstrate this. So, if I go to the Lee Chess analysis board and say, let's get a non trivial example going here. Let's see, what would be a good way to demonstrate this? Yeah. Say we play this, and then white plays queen f3. So we've reached this position the first time. Queen f3, queen f6, queen c3. Uh, I meant to do queen d6. So and now white repeats with queen f3, black repeats with queen f6. This position's appeared twice. Now, this position has appeared twice. Um, this position has only appeared twice so far because the first time, black's queen was on d8. So now, as we're looking at this, in fact, let me promote this to the main line if I can. I think I can. Yeah, promote to main line. And discard this. So... You'll note that if black plays queen f3, that repeats this position for the third time. So this position, this one, and this one are all the same position. So that's what you would commonly call threefold repetition. This is the most common way that threefold repetition does occur, um, is that white plays a move, black plays a response, and then white shuffles back and forth and black shuffles back and forth. Usually there's some sort of perpetual check or some sort of perpetual sort of threat involved and both players are forced into a cycle um, where if either one deviates, uh, it's to their detriment to do so. Uh, that's not the case in this. This is just illustrative, but it just shows um, this position occurred once, twice, and now if we're looking at this, black has the option to play that. Black should be able, before his move, to claim the draw uh, because he's able to play this queen f6. And then after black has played queen f6, white can claim the draw. However, just given the way the fide war rules work, black cannot make the move and then on white's time claim the draw. That's not how it works. A lot of chess servers let it work that way, and I guess that's the best they can do. Um, but ideally, um, black can only claim the draw from here. Um, now if black plays this and white goes back, then black's threatening to play that. And because black has threatened that, in fact, because this position has occurred three times as well, um, for both reasons, black is eligible to make a threefold repetition claim. Both because this particular position with the queen on c3 has occurred twice before, and because black can go ahead and play queen c6, repeating um, this particular position, which has already occurred twice. So black's threatening to play that and make a threefold repetition. So either way, black's able to claim threefold here. And similarly, white is both noting that this position's occurred three times, and he can make this happen, which also has occurred uh, twice before. So this is a... Th uh, but after white plays queen c3, as it's black's turn, um, white cannot claim a draw, because it's not white's move. Again, a lot of these semantics are lost in online chess world, but over the board it's kind of a big deal. Just imagine if you've repeated a position three times, and your opponent's thinking, hmm, do I want to claim a draw? And he spends a half hour, he spends an hour, he spends however long he wants to spend thinking about it. And then, um, to his dismay, his opponent tries to claim a draw, not on his move. 
or not on his opponent's move. Um, and, I mean, that's the main reason over the board um, you can only claim the draw on your move is because usually there's a lot of time involved in the game. And a player sitting there thinking, do I want a draw? Um, or do I want to make this claim? Or do I have anything better? Or am I forced to play on for some reason? I don't know. but um, Or do I want to play on? Even if I know I can only secure a draw with best play, maybe I still want to play the game. Um, there's all kinds of reasons a player might want to continue or might want to just consider claiming a draw right away. Um, in any event, after you've made your move, you can't claim the draw because your opponent's thinking, and then it would interrupt them, um, and so forth. Now, it's pretty common over the board in more casual arenas for players to repeat a position three times, and then either one claims the draw, and the other, the opponent's totally fine with it. Um, um, I mean, casually, often where these threefold repetitions occur, there isn't a good way for either player to deviate, and so even without the rule, uh, players would readily agree to a draw. Also frequently, players will agree to a draw before the third instance can happen. Um, just casually, if they both see there's this game's just not going anywhere, um, they don't necessarily need to move the pieces three times to see all this. But anyhow, um, that all goes back to this discussion of what's the half move clock and um, why if a pawn move or if a capture has occurred, you don't need to look at any of the positions prior to that pawn move or prior to that capture. So that's a little tweak I made here, just based on this to-do I saw in a comment, mentioning, oh, by the way, we can do this whole Zobrist key thing and it would improve performance. And it occurred to me, well, you know what else would improve performance? Changing this word true here to just change, replacing that with a half move clock such that in the start position and in any position following a pawn move or following a capture, we don't need to go back. And even when we do go back, we only need to go as far back as the last pawn move or as the last capture. We don't need to search any further beyond that. So I don't know whether this code occurs client side or server side. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, also my claim, um, my game seek is still out there, but I don't know if I'm going to find an audience this morning and time is um, ticking. So maybe I should come back some other time. Um, so yeah, this is what the code looks like. There's tons of code. I'm not sure to what extent. I mean, I'm sure this much is fine sharing it. I don't know what the license for the code is in general, so I'm going to desist from doing further sharing at this point. Um, but just to give you an idea of what I've been up to, I guess, with this. Oh, um, I guess I could show you one other thing. Well, I don't know how I'd even show it. It's too confusing, and it, unless you had a computer science background, it would be difficult to appreciate. Um, but I wonder. Yeah, okay. Sure. This might be worth showing. Let me pop the chat window on top of the console. There we go. So you see, here we got some logging. Um, in fact, let me make that full screen. Um, so this is another thing I did. Hey, welcome. Um, so I set this up, I think Sunday? Monday? I don't remember. No, it was Monday. Because I noticed that midday Monday, um, by the time I got home, I noticed that the server had gone down in the middle of the day. There was a bug in the server. It's been fixed, um, that particular bug. But just in general, I decided to make the server a bit more resilient so it can come up any time. Um, 
or rather, if it does go down, um, it should, um, uh, the system should try to restart the service as opposed to just leaving it down. And so we see things like this here where the code has an unhandled error event. Well, okay, this has happened because I tried to start up the server and presumably it was already running and already listening and there were some permissions problems or such. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's able to integrate um, this application server, uh, just the Relay Chess application, um, into the system as a service, such that all the logging goes to a standard place, and such that the system will attempt to restart the server if it crashes. Um, and so you get to see more recently, like here's everything the server is logged, here's me logging in and doing seeks and canceling seeks and all that stuff. Um, get to see exactly what time each one of those requests happened. Um, that's about all there is with regard to that. So without further ado, um, well, let's see. Has my browser captured anything of interest with regard to how much CPU is used by this application? Probably not. Um, I did have it profiling to see... Okay, that's kind of funny. I had it for several minutes uh, profiling just to how much uh, CPU is used by the JavaScript code. And... Um, apparently, I've recorded too much information and the developer tools are overwhelmed. Oh, no, never mind. It's just taking a long time to present the info. Um, but yeah, over the course of many, many seconds, um, only... Wait, how much of a second is this? 49.3 milliseconds. That's half a second. So in the course of many minutes of using the site, the program was only active for about half a second. And let's see, most of that was just in communicating with the server, just setting timeouts and sending messages to the server. So that's interesting. Well, I guess that makes sense. It means that nothing's going completely horribly awry here. Um, but yeah, uh, I suppose I should drop the link here one more time. I really, honestly, I probably don't have time for a game, but I can try to make time for it anyway. Um, and just try to keep some record of how many how much resources uh, the game is using during the course of an actual game I don't think any of the slowness or whatever it was that was experienced yesterday has anything to do with the server I'm running uh, probably has more to do with the combination of server and client and uh, just the network between them I expect that if there's any kind of performance thing at all it's probably not my server it's probably either just the way the application is architected to communicate with the server or the fact that we're running the server on my home network as opposed to running it I don't know somewhere up in the cloud with the computer that's uh, just dedicated um, in some kind of building that's directly attached to high-speed internet um, I don't know. So, whatever. Um, I'll find a way to try this against myself, or maybe at a better time, I'll mm, um, try this experiment again. I noticed that the other day, uh, there were a number of games played on it all simultaneously, and everything worked just fine, so that was good. Um, I'm trying to think what else could I consider improving. I could try to 
look into how logging is performed by the server um, and see if there's some way to record things more efficiently in logs such that um, right now the programs is dumping everything um, in some kind of console format and it's all one big stream um, yeah I guess I would appreciate an opponent although I might have to wrap up soon anyway but I don't know if you're up for it I could play a game um, I really only have time for one though and then maybe I could take a look at the results and see um, just how the game performed um, but I'm okay with wrapping up too and seeing maybe I do it some other time that would work fine for me as well Okay, yeah, I can hang on just a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think. I interrupted myself in responding here. Oh, so yeah, I was going to say uh, the server could potentially um, have multiple log files where you have one that logs the network traffic and one that logs who knows else you want to log. Right now, everything is just dumped into one big file. And, it, I mean, that's great, but that file is getting more and more enormous with time. All right, good luck. Here we go. Um, let's see. Oops, whatever. That's my mouse. <laughs> that's fine. I'll just have to be careful as I click to click to move. I'll have to give a little bit of thought to, to, um, oh, right. Now, if I try to do a pawn break, that doesn't work to my advantage here. Uh, this is probably fine, though. So, if takes, takes. And then if you take uh, my bishop, I do knight takes. And you're forced to block. Um, Oh, that was the other thing. Is, um, being able to just view games would be nice. Or at least to be able to access this board without having a game in progress. Um, that'd be kind of cool. There's all kinds of fun things that could be done. Um, let's see. Well, I can't believe I'm playing a normal chess game here. I kind of can, though, because the pawn structure dictates the way that the pieces are able to move. Um, so they aren't going too far. Okay. Well, might as well do this. It looks silly, but there is a point to it. The point is that now this knight can take that knight and create some kind of pawn imbalance. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that creates some hope that eventually, someday, um, something interesting might happen in this position. Um, thankfully, my abstaining from rook ae1 here, just delaying it for a move, wasn't fatal. It could have been. It could have cost me the e-pawn, um, and possibly more, but now my bishop was already protecting that. Actually, my knight was protecting that, too. Yeah. Well, I could pay better attention, can't I? Um, so now the queen protects the bishops. So now can move like a bishop. Or like a rook, but it's already protected by the rook. Um, so now my queen protects the knight. All my pieces are pretty much able to move the same way. See, he's piling all the pieces onto this pawn here. It's a fun strategy. Hopefully effective for him. At least, yeah, I hope for his sake it is. Um, I'm going to push e5, having not calculated all the variations. It just looks interesting. Uh, yeah. 
no, I think this... It's funny, I haven't really utilized uh, the relay capabilities of the pieces too much. But I think that's A-OK. -okay. Um, if the pieces are most effective the way they naturally move, why use them for any other purpose? So while this whole game is going on, I still have uh, developer tools recording how much network traffic is generated and all the good stuff like that. Um, so after the game, I could diagnose um, maybe there is some slowness that I can improve on. I don't know. Arguably, Queen and Knight could be pretty strong, too. Um, actually, I have to be careful here. Uh, yeah. Gotta be careful. Huh, I could consider King F2. That's crazy and kind of fun. Alright. Well, I think this is what I want to do. So now my rook... Well, obviously the rook could always move like a queen. Because uh, it's protected by the queen. But now it can move like a king, too. Not a big difference there. Um, I just have to be careful not to drop all my pieces suddenly. Um, um, There's all kinds of weak spots around my king, so I have to be kind of careful. Oh, that's a good move. Wow. Alright, I have to take it. down to five seconds. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I might not be winning this. And I have lost. That was a fun game. Um, yeah, I said I had to be careful, and I was not careful enough. Oh well. It's an interesting game. Um, so let me turn off the JavaScript CPU profiler and um, let it record the results and see like uh, what was expending the most JavaScript CPU effort. So this is only troubleshoot the client if there were any noticeable performance issues with the client itself. I predict that there probably weren't. That Probably CPU usage for by this game is probably quite low. Um, so yeah, this is saying throughout the course... Uh, I suppose I could actually show this capture on screen, so let me show it. Uh, where'd it go? Will this work? Yeah, there we go. So this shows that during the game, most of the time the CPU was idle. Um, However, of the time that was consumed, wait, 49.67%. Oh, it's consumed by program code? Well, anyway, you see where it says 568 here versus this 5. Let's see, how many points is that before the decimal point? 568822 versus 5473. So you see that, like, CPU utilization um, for this is at 1%, meaning that 99% of the time your CPU is idle while the game is going on. Um, you could probably improve this a little bit more, but it, the, there's just such a marginal return on improving it that what's the point? But you could probably improve this somehow. Um, and we see that 
of the CPU utilization, most of it is in these two functions here, these get piece attackers and in build attributes. And you can further break this down and see like, okay, get piece attackers was slow because, or spent so much resources because build attributes spent so much in resources. Um, and we see that, um, actually, is this breakdown differently based on which way you get into it? Like here we have build attributes, here we have build attributes. Make move and undo move consume about the same and update setup consumes about nothing. Um, so yeah, actually these undo move and make move are kind of expensive. Um, and I wonder why. So if we break this down, I'm sure it breaks down the same way, no matter how you slice it, that most of this is in generate moves and most of this is in generate moves. So you can take a look and see there's git disambiguator. Let's just for sake of simplicity, cut that down a bit. So there's git disambiguator, um, move to san, make pretty, moves. <laughs> So most of the CPU cycles that are spent in that 1% of the CPU, uh, CPU time, because most of the time, 99% of the time the CPU is idle, but in that 1%, most of what it's doing is generating um, SAN, which is standard algebraic notation, uh, and trying to figure out what pieces can move to what squares. And the more I think about that, that's actually kind of a tricky task. Um, wait, does this just go infinitely? Or is there an end to this somewhere? I don't know. This is socket on event. Uh, interesting. I'm not sure how to read this. Like in this stack, I'm not sure which is the head and which is the tail. Likely get piece attackers is not calling build attributes. So it's more likely that make move calls build attributes, which calls get piece attackers. That's probably how I should read this. Um, so like moves calls make pretty, calls move to sand calls get disambiguator for standard algebraic notation and so forth um, but most of that CPU uh, is probably spent in this feature oh there's not even a move list I thought there was a move list I think during the game we saw a move list here um, yeah, I guess one thing to be worked on would be a game replay function. So I could be able to see a game and, um, anyway. Yeah, I don't know if there was a move list or not, but most of the CPU utilization was spent trying to generate the move list. If I'm reading that correctly. Uh, let me go back to this window. And we see like there's get piece attackers there. Uh, there's build attributes just called from. Again, I think much of what this is about is just generating the move list. And then there's this thing, anonymous function in play controller, which calls moves. Um, and then anonymous function is called by chess to desks. Um, let me take a look at play controller. Can I see that here? So, chess, squares for each. Yeah, I could take a look at this at some other time too. Um, but there's something going on here. Anyway, this is where the CPU cycles are spent. Um, We'll look more into this in another time, because unfortunately I will have things to attend to this morning. So I'll we'll have to get back to this later, but this is, again, some of the code 
I gotta also figure out how this code is licensed and if this is gonna be open source or not. Um, and if it is open source, then that means there's no reason not to share it as far as I can see. Um, anyhow, it's been fun. Thanks for watching. And um, we'll explore this more at a future time. So see you around.